who have made progressive inputs in terms of uh, thinking nuances of uh, gender dimension, lived experiences of gender relations in a day-to-day -day life and also the various uh, types of uh, 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 expressions in the documentaries and the feature films that have been made by, by uh, on women, uh, maybe by men and women and also in the areas which were earlier totally of you know, camera or the cinematography, all these things were earlier being dominated. So we also brought in like Aruna Raji, who was the first woman director, or many uh, many other uh, uh, Paramita Bora who made <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure in maintaining strong mental health, as we commemorate World Mental Health Day. We are honored to introduce a remarkable individual who exemplifies inspiration, perseverance, and empathy. She is a for mental health, Ms. Bhageshri Dasani, a veteran scientist who works at the crossroads of cinema, social work, and health. Please join us in the greeting of Ms. Bhageshri Dasani, who has worked in several Hindi, Marathi, Kannada, Telugu, Tamil, and Bengali films. Her fascination and passion, we honor her tireless efforts to build a healthy society. Now, may I request Srimati Himadi Nanavati, our Chairperson, Managing Committee and Trust, to felicitate our guest, Ms. Bhageshi Dasani, with a Tulsi plan, a love of token from us. Thank you, ma'am. Now it's our time to introduce our second guest whose journey is inspiring to many. Madhuvinder Singh Gokhil, the largest non-profit organization for HIV treatment and testing. Currently, he is developing his dream project, a uh, LGBTQA community campus at his royal establishment of Hanuman Teshwar for the social and financial empowerment of the I request Dr. Yogini Jade, Honorary Secretary, Managing Committee and Trust to felicitate Prince Manvendra Singh Goyal with a Tulsi flag as a token of love and appreciation. on mental health with our esteemed guest Ms. Bhageshi Dasani and Prince Manvendra Singh Gohan, which is moderated by Dr. Cecilia Chetia, Head Department of Psychology, Mani Benalavati Women's College. I request the other members to please be seated. Namaste, good afternoon and it's an absolute pleasure to be in a place where really the women in our society get provided financially, mentally, supported to achieve their dreams. So thank you so much first of all for having me here. To your question I would say, yes born into privileged homes but with that comes the responsibility of living up to that privilege. People around us also expect us to behave in a certain way uh, to prove ourselves that we really deserve the privilege that we have been blessed with. And that becomes a problem because when you're growing up, you're just a child. Like any other child, you don't realize that you are born into that kind of privilege. 
but the people around you are constantly judging you from that perspective. So I think the biggest challenge is um, avoiding that kind of judgment that puts you in a place of envy, of jealousy, of wanting to bring down the other person because as humans, one rarely, really glorifies another person's accomplishments. You know, unfortunately our society thrives on bringing down the other person rather than uh, feeling happy for someone who's achieved anything in their lives or just feeling happy for someone else's happiness. And I think that is the biggest problem. So while you're growing up, especially for me, um, growing up in a royal household, of course, there was a lot of do's and don'ts. Though I was born and brought up in Bombay, life in Bombay was very different to what it was in Sangli, which is my hometown. And there somehow, uh, we are revered in a, in a completely different place. So for me, being an eight-year-old or nine-year-old who doesn't understand what so-called privileges are meant to be, coming from a school in Bombay, studying in a convent, uh, being a normal person and then having to go back to a place where you're supposed to behave in a certain way was very, very difficult. And not only to prove myself to the society in general, but there were also lots of do's and don'ts, as I'm sure you would agree, where restrictions were put on by our parents, by our family. There was a certain decorum, don't laugh loudly, don't uh, squat on the floor, don't eat with your hands, uh, don't munch with your mouth open. I mean, these are basic matters, but we have to follow them very strictly. You know, it was like, you can't speak loudly, you can't laugh loudly, you can't cry loudly, you have to behave in a certain way, and people won't believe it. But I think that was in the eighth standard when my father told me, no more wearing skirts, jeans, or any other form of dressing other than a sari when I would go uh, to Sangli. Also, I had to keep my head covered. It was the protocol of what was required at that point of time. So it, it comes very strange because all of you, like me, we have studied and we have been born and brought up in a cosmopolitan atmosphere where we don't really have to follow these norms. So when you, when I would go back there and I would have to follow these restrictions, it was, it was suffocating. It was so difficult. But we weren't supposed to ask questions and we were supposed to follow the norms. So yes, it was very, very difficult at that age. Now, I, I'm remembering now that like you said this, I wasn't allowed to wear shorts after, after the age time. <laughs> no t-shirts and no shorts. No, not allowed. I was given a scolding by my grandmother. There's no way you to wear long pants now that you come in eighth standard. I said, wow. <laughs> so there, there are so, much, so much of restriction there. I, I totally get agree. There you have it, ladies. If you think only you're being restricted at home, it doesn't matter where you come from. Restrictions are part of life. So let's go to work with them. Um, most of our audience today are adolescents or young adults. And they pass a stage called as imaginary audience. An imaginary audience is where you feel like constantly being judged, evacuated, the people are constantly looking at you. Now for adolescents that is imaginary, they know it, but they don't know how to handle it. The two of you are public figures. You are actually watched, judged, evaluated, and unfortunately, how do you deal with this? First of all, I would say this, the strength that, that we have been giving, given with is us. We cannot be, we are biggest strength. We are our biggest strength. So it's so important to believe in yourself. Because I realize this, that unless you believe in yourself, no one else is going to. When you look at yourself in the mirror and find someone who is confident, who 
believes in what he or she is doing. That's the only way that you are going to pick up your sword and fight the world. So if you're going to look to someone else uh, complimenting you, patting you on the back for your accomplishments, uh, guiding you through life, sorry, that ain't happening. That ain't happening till you help yourself. And as they say, that God helps you lead the way only if you work towards it yourself. So, you can't wish for things to happen and pray to God. Just at the exam time, they all go to the mandir and they say, God, give me so many marks, I'll give you so many marks. God is not going to do that for you unless you study, right? If you study, then you will have marks. So, say, go to the mandir and go to the mandir. So, say, go to the mandir. So, say, go to the mandir. I think if you work towards it yourself, you believe in yourself, and yes, that takes an effort. That takes an effort to hone your skills, to nurture your own dreams, to be strong, determined, and work towards the path that you want to go with dedication. When you are concentrating on yourself, I don't think you have time to concentrate on the jobs and the bobs what the society has done. Um, we have all traveled in Mumbai. We know what it is like when a man is looking at us and sometimes they claim to be looking at us with innocent eyes but very often we know that the mind behind those eyes is not all that innocent. You started very young in front of the camera and doing something that probably nobody, nobody in your family did before. How did you find the strength to hold your ground and face the camera? It was difficult. I mean, there were scenes in Men of Yardia that I got changed. Fortunately, I could because Suraji really wanted me to act in Men of Yardia, so I was lucky. Um, I was also lucky to have Salman as a co-star. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, he was very protective. He was also very and uh, extremely well-mannered. Every scene that we had to do, he would literally take my permission and say, you're okay with me doing this, right? So it was simple for me. I would say I'm blessed. Um, but like you said, yes, uh, dirty male gaze does happen. Uh, somehow you feel small. Sometimes you can't stand up. You feel that you can't stand up to stop something like that.